Good evening. Today, we transitioned from search and rescue to recovery. We need to bring a sense of closure and comfort to the families, and we take that very seriously. And to all the families, I say, estamos contigo, ahora y siempre. Less than an hour after the collapse, we had divers in the water at 2.25 a.m. to begin search and rescue. This morning, we had divers in the water starting at 6 a.m. for search and recovery. This is not a conclusion. It's a continuation. And we take this phase just as seriously and just as personally as we took the last phase. And I want to thank, as always, all of our first responders, the Maryland State Police, the Coast Guard, the Natural Resources Police, Baltimore City Police Departments, in Baltimore County, Baltimore City, and Prince George's County Fire Departments, and everybody who was involved inside of this work. Now I can tell you over these past days, we have heard an outpouring of thoughts and prayers coming in from all around the world. For Baltimore, for Maryland, for the victims, and for their families. And to everybody who is sending out those prayers, I want to say that we have felt them, and we've com been comforted by them. To everybody who has shared kind words, we want to say that we appreciate the words and the kind gestures that you have shown. And we also want to let everybody know this that going forward, we're also going to need your support. The collapse of the Key Bridge is not just a Maryland crisis. The collapse of the Key Bridge is a global crisis. The national economy and the world's economy depends on the Port of Baltimore. The Port handles more cars and more farm equipment than any other port in the country. Last year alone, the port handled $80 billion of foreign cargo, the largest in the country. Now, in the last 24 hours that we've had a chance to work with the Navy to mobilize major resources all around to be able to make sure that we are getting things moving, and this has happened at record speed. And I was informed that they are still assessing the area and organizing with a thorough plan of action. This afternoon, I also had the chance to meet with the Maryland Department of Transportation and my executive team and all the leaders there. And we talked about how we are going to continue to mobilize assets at all levels of government and society to make sure that we are moving forward collectively with our response. Today also, Maryland submitted our request to the Biden-Harris administration asking for emergency relief funds to assist in our work going forward. And I had the opportunity to speak to the President again today by phone. I'm thankful also that we're here joined by Tom Perez, who I know is also going to share words later on. And Tom, it's wonderful to see you here, and thank you for the continued support and work. So the thing we know is this. I do not know at this point what the total costs are going to be. I do not yet know what the full timeline is going to be. But the thing that I do know is that the task in front of us, it will be real, it will be daunting. But despite this task ahead of us being daunting, I can tell you right now, our resolve is unshaken. We will get to completion. We will do it together. This work will take time. But we are going to make sure that we are going to leave no one behind. We are going to take care of our people. At least 8,000 workers on the docks have jobs that have been directly affected by the collapse. We need to make sure we're supporting them in this moment, and we need to make sure that we are getting them back on the job. And the same goes for many others that have been affected by this crisis, both directly and indirectly. We are going to move forward together because that's what we do, because we are Maryland tough and Baltimore strong. I will now turn it over 
to Colonel Butler from Maryland State Police for updates. Thank you, Governor. I'm Colonel Roland L. Butler, Jr., Superintendent of the Maryland Department of State Police. This morning, as the Governor said, we moved from search and rescue to search and recovery. The Maryland State Police, along with the underwater recovery teams, supported by state, local, and federal partners, made a tragic finding. Shortly before 10 a.m., divers located a red pickup truck submerged in approximately 25 feet of water in the area of the middle span of the bridge. Divers recovered two, two victims of this tragedy trapped within the vehicle. The victims were identified as Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, 35 years old, of Baltimore, and Dorlian Ranial Castillo Cabrera, 26 years old, of Dundalk. Their family members were notified just over an hour ago in person by Maryland State Police personnel with crisis intervention personnel present. Knowing the gravity of this, we provided them with a list of resources that they can refer to and refer their friends and family to. At this point, based upon the conditions, we're now moving from a recovery mode to a salvage operation. Because of the superstructure surrounding the vehicle, what we believe are the vehicles, and the amount of concrete and debris, divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. We have exhausted all search efforts in the areas around this, this wreckage, and based on sonar scans, we firmly believe that the vehicles are encased in the superstructure and concrete that we tragically saw come down. At this point, as this moves to a salvage recovery effort, the Maryland State Police will continue to support the unified command as the salvage assessment phase takes place and the U.S. Coast Guard will brief you addition, additional information regarding what to expect and possibly how long this could take. But I'll tell you now, there's no definitive timeline on this. Please be patient. Please keep the family members in mind. In coordination with our FBI partners, we've determined the countries of origin of those that are presumed deceased to be Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. The notifications to these individuals' family members and loved ones outside of the United States is being handled by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in accordance with their established protocols. Again, I encourage you all to think about these people and those that they love and they lost. They're going to need your love and support. And now I'll hand it off to the Admiral. Good evening. My name is Rear Admiral Shannon Gilry. First, I want to say our deepest condolences go out to the and sympathy go out to the families of the impacted individuals. Uh, I also want to announce that uh, the Coast Guard, along with our federal and state and local agency partners, have stood up a unified command. Our number one priority in that unified command is to reopen the waterway so that we can safely move commerce in and out of the Port of Baltimore. That's our number one priority. We're going to do that as soon as possible and as safely as possible. So. That's what we're doing from a unified command perspective. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Paul Wiedefeld, Secretary of Transportation. Um, the entire department's heartbroken uh, to, to have lost these individuals on one, our, on one of our facilities. I did want to update you on the efforts that we're doing to move forward uh, with the reconstruction of the bridge. As was mentioned earlier by the governor, <coughs> we have applied for the dollars, uh, the federal dollars that are available for this type of purpose. I sent a letter uh, earlier this morning. I just got off a phone call with the Federal Highway Administrator on the, on the step, the process that we're moving forward. 
We intend to re get, re receive some additional federal dollars very quickly to start that process, and then we will come up with a design for the replacement of that bridge as quickly as possible uh, to get the port back up and the community back up and running. Thank you. Senator Ben Cardin. First, let me express our deepest condolences uh, to the families of the victims of this horrible tragedy. And I also want to personally thank all the first responders. Uh, I had a chance to see firsthand some of the diving activities, and it was extremely challenging, to say the least. And we, we, we know that the quick action of our first responders saved lives by keeping vehicles off the bridge before it collapsed. So I really want to congratulate our first responders. When you have a catastrophic event like this that affects uh, transportation infrastructure that's critically important to our community and to our uh, region, the federal government comes to your help. And we are asking the federal government to help us through this crisis. President Biden has responded in a very direct way. We are very confident that we will get the immediate attention that we need, uh, thanks to the Biden administration and our federal partners. We also will need the help of the Congress. Senator Van Hollen and I will be working with our entire congressional delegation to make sure that we provide the necessary authorization, support, and resources to make this recovery complete and that we can move as quickly as possible. Make no mistake about it, our top priority is to get the shipping lane open. We recognize that every day it's closed the impact it has not just on Baltimore and our economy and the state of economy, but in our country and affects the global supply chain. Uh, and we recognize that we have to move with dispatch in regards to opening the channel. We are also working today on, on a replacement bridge so that we can also have those plans in place and have the tools and resources available so that we can reconstruct the bridge as quickly as possible. First priority, open the shipping lanes, let us replace the bridge, and we appreciate the fact that the federal government will be there every step of the way. Senator Van Hollen. I, I want to start where the governor and Senator Cardin and others did uh, by saying to the families of the six that we lost in this tragic accident that our hearts go out to you and we, as the Maryland family, uh, will do everything we can to provide you with the resources that you need in this very difficult time. It's also a solemn reminder of both the contributions and the sacrifices that our immigrant families make in our community and around uh, the country. And I also want to thank the first responders uh, for, first of all, the search and rescue operation and now uh, the recovery operation. Thank you all for the hard work that you're doing. As others have said, we have two priorities. The most urgent priority is to open up the Port of Baltimore because as the governor laid out, it is essential uh, to the livelihoods of people here in Baltimore and Maryland uh, and in fact the economies of the region and will impact people around the country and around uh, the world. The Port of Baltimore is that important and it is the, the 8,000 people who are working there directly, the tens of thousands of people whose economic livelihood is tied up with the, with the port. So I, I want to thank the President of the United States, um, who called many of us yesterday and then spoke to the nation, is already delivering on his promise, which he has ordered the Army Corps of Engineers to do everything necessary to clear uh, the channel so that we can reopen those shipping lanes. Uh, we have to open one first and over a period of time. Uh, I think we're going to do whatever we can uh, to make sure that we have ships passing through as soon as possible. Uh, the, the Army Corps of Engineers, the federal government, will pick up the costs uh, for that, um, and those funds are available. I saw preliminary estimates between 40 and $50 million, but they are very preliminary. But the bottom line is the Army Corps uh, will pick up the costs. Uh, I want to commend the governor and his team for their fast action in putting forward uh, the notice uh, that they're going to apply uh, for the federal uh, emergency relief fund, uh, part of the federal uh, Department of Transportation's uh, 
program, uh, the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, we will be working very closely with the governor, um, Secretary Wiedefeld, and others uh, and their team as you process that. Uh, just to give you all a sense of what that, what that means, uh, for that you can draw down funds immediately uh, for some of the costs of diverting traffic um, and other immediate costs to, uh, to adjust to uh, what happened in the short term. Uh, and then uh, going forward, uh, that relief fund uh, provides um, a strong federal match. We believe it will be 90-10 um, in terms of the federal share. Um, for the 10% uh, remainder, uh, Senator Cardin and I will be working very closely uh, with the President and our colleagues in the Congress uh, to make sure that we meet uh, President Biden's pledge to do as much as possible uh, to make sure that um, the federal government picks up the costs. Some have asked about the uh, ship owners themselves. Obviously, as the NTSB conducts uh, its review, we'll have a better idea of exactly what happened. And if anybody is liable for negligence or wrongdoing, um, you can be assured that we will be pursuing uh, those funds uh, as part of uh, the cost share. Uh, from the congressional point of view, uh, we will be pursuing, as I say, uh, what we hope will be about 10 percent of the total costs uh, through the legislative process. Uh, we will push to increase, make any increases necessary uh, in that emergency federal fund and, again, put forward legislation. Um, Senator Cardin and I are in the process right now of reaching out, putting a phone call. Uh, into Speaker Johnson uh, because we think that this is some something where Americans should come together. This should not be a question of Republicans or Democrats. This is an American uh, challenge. We are a great American city here in Baltimore, and we're hoping that all of our colleagues will come together uh, and join us uh, in making sure we rebuild the bridge because, as the, the governor said, we do this together, and we hope that will also be true in the United States Congress. So thank, thank you to everybody who's been part of this. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to the mayor of uh, this. Tom. I'm sorry, to Tom Perez, <laughs> another great Marylander uh, who is now uh, at the White House doing wonderful work with the president. Tom Perez. Thank you. thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Tom Perez, and I have the privilege of serving as a senior advisor to President Biden. And President Biden like the nation, grieves for these victims. And he is no stranger to tragedy in his own family. And Governor, thank you so much for your leadership throughout this <coughs> challenging situation. It's been steadfast and it has been remarkable. We are all in this together. When President Biden first heard about this yesterday morning, he summoned everyone who had a relevant stake in the game to come together to make sure that every federal resource was put to bear. So we see the Coast Guard, we see the Army Corps, we see the National Transportation Safety Board, we see the Department of Labor. The President directed us to make sure that we are doing everything possible. Success occurs when everybody is working together, and that's exactly what is happening here. I met with the families earlier today. And it is really, really tragic. And we will get through this. We have no doubt about it. And the President has directed us to move heaven and earth. Those aren't my words, those are his words. To make sure we are helping the remarkable people of the great state of Maryland to move forward. And we, we will indeed, Governor, I can inform you with confidence that we will process your request promptly because the situation calls for prompt action. Déjame hablar poquito en español, porque las víctimas son latinos. Me llamo Tomás Pérez. Yo trabajo por el presidente Biden. Hoy es un día muy, muy triste para nuestro estado y nuestro país. Y el presidente entiende bien el sufrimiento de la comunidad. Y el presidente en la dama uh, primera, um, las oraciones de ellos son con la familia de las víctimas. Presidente Biden entiende bien la necesidad de construir uh, la puente, de construir 
oportunidad para todos los residentes de Maryland y vamos a trabajar junto en esta causa. We will continue this work, whether it's the Department of Labor, whether it's the, our colleagues who are here today, we will do that together because that is what teamwork is about. Thank you for being the captain of the team, Governor, and we will continue to move forward. And speaking of other members of the team, it's an honor to present to you the mayor of the great city of Baltimore, Brandon Scott. Good evening. Uh, first and most importantly, to each of the families, know that my heart and the heart of the entire city of Baltimore is with you and will be with you forever. To every first responder, whether you're from Baltimore Fire, Baltimore Police, Maryland State Police, of a Coast Guard, our county partners, thank you. Thank you for being fearless and selfless and for putting your life at risk to save others as you did uh, yesterday, today, and each and every day. To Baltimore, we are all hurting, but we must be reminded in this moment that we are Baltimore. The city of Baltimore cannot be broken. We will continue to work with our federal and state partners through this. We will not be broken, but we are asking today also for some patience. As you heard, uh, we will reopen the channel as quickly as possible, but it's, it's just important that it's done the right way. We also, well, this is me, I'm also asking for folks to have a little bit of decency and respect. Uh, don't spread misinformation. Don't play bridge engineer online or in the media. Remember that these are people's family members who lost their lives simply trying to make transit better for the rest of us. We are strong. Our spirit in our city is strong and cannot be broken. We will rebuild and heal the Baltimore way and that's together. Thank you. And I'll turn it back over to the governor. Thank you all. I'm going to take some questions. Start with Aaron Cox in the front. Hi, sir. Um, we've heard a lot of reports that the ship had engine failure before it got to port. There were some problems while it was at port. What do you know about the state of the ship as it was pulling out right before it hit that bridge? Uh, we, we're still under investigation as to what exactly happened. Uh, and we don't have any, any, a declarative answer as to why there was power challenges and power issues. Uh, the thing that we do know is that uh, we have documented that there were power challenges as, the, ch as the, uh, the freight was coming up on the bridge. And when the Mayday call was coming in, the Mayday call came in because of the power issues and the lack of ability to steer the vessel. Can I follow up? Yeah. I, um, I just wanted to follow up on that and say by power challenges, you mean uh, reports that it lost power before it even left the port? And can um, possibly Secretary Lieberfeld, can you confirm that one of the two people rescued yesterday was a state inspector? <coughs> yes, uh, one of them was an inspector, actually with a contractor, uh, but not with the uh, the firm that was doing the work. I'm sorry. It was a, it was a engineering firm, and not the not the people doing the work on the bridge. Contracted by the state. Yes, to do it yes, but not as but not a state employee. No, Browner Builder is the construction company, and then there's another engineering company, I'll get you the name, and that was the construction manager overseeing the work. And what about the engine question? Uh, confirm it. Well, I told so, the uh, Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as the engine goes, we, we were not informed of any problems with the vessel. We were informed that they were going to conduct routine engine maintenance on it while it was in port, and that's the only thing we were informed about the vessel in that regard, ma'am. Brian? Well, can, can you say any more about what the power issue was? There's been some, uh, some conjecture that maybe fuel was involved. Uh, what, what, what is known about that at this time? So, so what, what we know at this time is uh, we don't have a confirmed answer as to what exactly the power issue was. We know that the power issue uh, connected and meant it was an inability for there to be proper steering and proper adjustments on the, uh, on the, on the vessel, but we do not have uh, any further details as of yet until a further investigation is completed. Fox, what's that? Do you know if drivers were stopped from going onto the bridge, but were construction workers able to be notified? Yes, uh, so, uh, so the first responders who, again, were uh, really moved heroically 
uh, after the first May Day was called, we're able to both move towards keeping additional cars from coming on, uh, coming on the bridge, and also begin to notify uh, some of the, the workers and people on the bridge that they needed to move off the bridge. Uh, in, in fact, uh, one of the, the, the survivors who I had the opportunity to speak with, uh, one of the things he mentioned to me was as he was moving off of the bridge uh, and literally saw the bridge fall right after he moved off, uh, it was because it was a first responder who was telling him to move off of the bridge. I'm sorry, how, how did that communication happen? Because the first, I heard of it. How were they able to communicate with the crew? Was it on the other radio channel? Well, with the, fir with the first responders, when they, when they were first responding mm -hmm. and they began to move uh, and to keep cars from coming on, they were also notifying people on the bridge they need to move off the bridge. Yeah, but how? Well, I think we'll find out by investigation what exactly happened. I know that the one person I spoke with, he said it was audibly that the that the officer was telling him to move off. All right, we're going to move on ABC Seven. Well, I was essentially going to ask that same that same okay. question, just, just to confirm that there were efforts made. All right, they were Brad. Yes. Just on Yeah, Paul Person, um, do you support the proposed Port Act in spite of the state's current fiscal situation? Uh, I, I've not gone through the uh, the, the the Port Act. Uh, in detail. The thing that I know is that we will work in coordination with the General Assembly uh, with a response. Uh, we will work with our, you know, we're thankful for the work that we're having on the federal side of our federal delegation and our partners in the White House on it as well. And we know the response that we are going to have as a state is one that needs to be coordinated uh, and one that we are going to do and make together. All right, right here. Can you confirm that uh, the two people that were recovered today were the Yeah, I, I can I can speak to the first question in Admiral or. or. Uh, your first question is I understand that shortly after 10 a.m. the divers located the vehicle. It took them a while to secure that vehicle properly, place airbags around the vehicle. Then it was very slow traveling to tow that vehicle to the shoreline. At some point, they realized that the water's depth would not support towing it all the way in. It was at that point the uh, the seas were removed from the vehicle and brought to the shore where they were placed in the custody of the medical examiner's office. Second part of your question was? Just, uh, can you just confirm that those two, th those were two of the construction workers, two of the six? They were both working for the construction company. One of the individuals was identified by a driver's license in his pocket. The other individual was identified by fingerprint. Okay. Uh, um, so what time uh, did all, all the, the searching stop today, or the, the in-water search? The in-water searching, in searching stopped at about 4 o'clock today. The divers did exhaust the search area around that to ensure that they couldn't get in there. The sonar supported the conclusion that the divers all reached, and you had divers working from multiple jurisdictions, and the sonar simply said that they could not get to that area because it was fully encased in the superstructure. Now, once that salvage effort takes place and that superstructure is removed, those same divers are going to go back out there and bring those people closure. All right, next question. Uh, Governor, are you not really nice that there were any other vehicles at the Central Dixon Embassy? Yeah, the, the information that we have as of right now is that there were no additional vehicles. Uh, you know, there will still be a, a full investigation conducted, but we have no information as of right now that shows that there are additional vehicles. And briefly, the nationalities of the wounded of the two um, victims recovered today. Yes. This shows Mr. Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes, lived in Baltimore, but was from Mexico. And Mr. Cabrera is from Guatemala. Can you, can you just spell those names as well as I asked? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, sorry. Uh, which one would you like first, Alejandro? Sure. A-L-E-J-A-N-D-R-O, the middle is Hernandez, H-E-R-N-A-N, D-E-Z, last name of Fuentes, F-U-E-E-T-E-S. Your second victim, first name spelling D-O-R-L-I-A-N, his two middle names, R-O-N-I-A-L, the next is Castillo, C-A-S-T-I-L-L-O, and the last of Cabrera, C-A-B-R-E-R-A. 
And if you are missing those names, you will get the opinions mm -hmm. um, afterwards if you did not get that. We'll take ABC News, we'll take some more questions after that. Do we have any updates on the medical condition of the, the survivor who was hospitalized? Uh, the survivor who was hospitalized was released earlier today. All right, next question. Has that person been interviewed, and what kind of interviews do you expect to, what kind of information do you expect to, to need to get from that person? Obviously, we're looking for any information pertaining to this tragedy. He has been interviewed. There will probably be follow-up interviews conducted by the Maryland State Police and NTSB, as well as federal partners. Have you learned anything in those that you think is important to what happened in the moment before? At, at this juncture, I, I would be remiss if I went into what's going on in an ongoing investigation. All right, Brother, one more time. Are barges and cranes on the way? I know there's no way to have a time frame to get anything reopened, but I guess I'm simply asking is, is help physically on the way? And do you have a time frame for when things could start being lifted from the water? I don't have a time frame on the actual lift yet because we're still putting those plans together. We're going to lift as soon as possible. We do have barges on the way and the crane barges as well. They're coming uh, as we speak now, sir. We're going to take one final question. Anyone have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Sorry. Oh, we understand, at least in the past, that um, the, the cargo ship were tugged, were brought by tug through and underneath the bridge, but that that stopped uh, several years ago for carrying food. Is there any, I'm not sure it's a local question, but is there any plans to maybe once it's open, re reinstitute that and have these ships tugged out? I'm sure you know, no matter, it, it could have been going one knot and it could take the bridge down someday. So um, are there plans to change the protocol because of this? We, we will obviously investigate all protocols associated with this. We'll also look to the NTSB and some of their recommendations because they've reviewed the entire, every process that we followed to the Port of Baltimore. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.